All right, this is the metric measuring practice lab. First thing I'm going to do, get a little hand sanitizer on my hand just to make sure any germs that are on my hands do not get onto the lab equipment. The purpose of this lab is to practice measuring using the metric system. So at the lab table, there will be a meter stick, a triple beam balance, and a spring scale. You will also be using your stopwatch on your phone. The objects that will be measured are also on the table. So you have this triple beam balance, you have a meter stick, and you also have the spring scale, and you will be using the stopwatch app that's on your phone. So question number one is the meter stick is used to measure length. What is the resolution of the meter stick? Does the meter stick have an uncertainty digit? Why or why not? So remember, resolution is the smallest interval that can be measured using an instrument. So what do each one of those little tick marks represent? Now the other question is, does it have an uncertainty digit? Now remember, an uncertainty digit can only be applied if it's an analog instrument. So start thinking about, is this an analog or a digital instrument? All right, question number two. The triple beam balance is used to measure mass. What is the resolution of the triple beam balance? Does the triple beam balance have an uncertainty digit? Why or why not? Now, so remember, the resolution is the smallest interval. So let's look at that smallest one. What do each one of those little tick marks represent? You can see here I've got, well, three different ones. One of them goes by 100, one of them goes by 10, one of them goes by 1. But the, the 1 grams are divided up even further. What do each one of those tick marks represent? And tell me if there's an uncertainty digit. Remember, it can only happen in analog instruments. Is this an analog instrument? Now, the spring scale is used to measure force. What is the resolution of the spring scale? Does the spring scale have an uncertainty digit? Why or why not? So the spring scale, right? It, it is used to measure force of something that's uh, being pulled. So the resolution is each one of those small little tick marks. This one's a little bit tricky, a little bit trickier. But what do each one of those little tick marks represent? So you see here that this big one is 0 0.5 newtons. That, that one in between is 0 0.25. What do each one of these little tick marks represent? Now it asks you, uh, does it have an uncertainty digit wire? Why not? Only for analog instruments, is this an analog instrument? Now, the last one says the stopwatch on your phone is used to measure time. What is the resolution of the stopwatch on your phone? Does the stopwatch on your phone have an uncertainty digit? Why or why not? So what does that last digit represent on your stopwatch? What does it represent? Right. And so that's the resolution. It doesn't have an uncertainty digit. Is it an analog instrument? OK, so let's go to uh, the next question. So we're going to time how long it takes to complete this lab. Whoever is timing the lab, get out the stopwatch on your phone and start the time now. Stop the time when the last measurement is taken. How many seconds did it take to complete the lab? Now this might take some math. And then it asks, how many significant figures does your measurement have? So get out the phone, and I'm going to start, and now we're timing. OK, so we're going to use the meter stick to record the length of both rods in meters then in the data table below. Then we're going to convert these measurements to centimeters. How many significant figures does your measurement have? So there's two rods. There's a plastic rod and there's a metal rod. And you're going to use this meter stick to measure the length of them. Good, 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 good. Then you're going to convert them to centimeters. So it's very easy on the lab. You can look this up online, or there, I'm sure there are calculators. But there's also a nice little chart. All you have to do in the metric system is just move the decimal point a certain uh, number of uh, digits. So we're starting with the base unit, meters, and converting to centimeters. All right, so we did that for both uh, the plastic rod and the metal rod. OK. And the next one says, use the triple beam balance to measure and record the mass of both cubes in grams in the data table below. Convert these measurements to kilograms. How many significant figures does your measurement have? So I'm going to put these. Uh, it starts off with the plastic one. And what you do is you just sort of uh, you measure the mass uh, based on, you know, and you want to make sure that this is even. Right, so that is what you are going to do to find the mass of both the plastic cube and the metal cube. It was going to be a hundred and thirty. 
30 something. So do that, and then you're going to convert it to kilograms. All right, um, then we're going to use the spring scale to record the mass of both of these masses with the little hook. So this one, there's a small one. Oh, make sure I have the Newton sign. Well, I notice that it's pulling down. You can see the spring scale is at a certain one. Well, what is that in Newtons? Then we're going to use the larger one. You can see it's a lot heavier. Now, just find out what that measurement is in Newtons. Good. Now, once you're done with that, you're going to convert it to millinewtons. So we don't use that much. Uh, but it is good to convert using the uh, conversion charts. Good. And, well, now that I'm done, I can stop the time. Stop. So we got 2 minutes, 53 seconds, point, or 53.57 seconds. And I'm going to have to convert that 2 minutes into seconds. So I multiply that by 60, add it to the 53, uh, that's point 0.7. So uh, that is going to give me the time that it took to take these measurements in seconds. And then it asks for how many significant figures does this measurement have. And there's no conversion. We're not going to convert uh, time. All right. Now those conclusion questions identify any random errors that, that were or could have been present in this experiment. Did the random errors affect the accuracy or precision of the experiment? What was done to mitigate the random errors in this experiment? So think about random errors. Random errors affect... Uh, either accuracy or precision, uh, tell me which one, and what was done to mitigate that, right? What was done to mitigate that? So random errors is that inability to take the same measurement in the exact same way. And number 10, that last question is, identify any systematic errors that were or could have been in this experiment. Did the systematic errors affect the accuracy or precision of this experiment? What was done to mitigate the systematic errors in this experiment? So think about uh, there's any errors that might have occurred uh, when taking measurements, either the parallax one or uh, the way the instruments uh, behaved or like were, were set or calibrated. So uh, I'm going to get a little hand sanitizer just to re-sanitize my hands. Once again, this has been the Metric Measuring Practice Lab.